YouTube and Snapchat and Rumble and fuck, shake your tits and swing your dicks. It's Friday, kids, and I'm back with another Make Yourself Moist in the Pants episode of your favorite internet sensation. That's right, another episode of the Friday Wrap-Up. Before we get today's show kicked off, I want to tip my hat to today's libation. I'm, you know, summer's over. It's officially fall now, so we can do away with all those frou-frou summer drinks and go back to the basics, you know, all the fall uh, classics, whiskey, Manhattans, things like that. And I got a whole lineup of great fall drinks for you guys. Um, I got a sweet potato pie martini recipe up in here that I want to I want to share with you. But tonight we're going to go pretty simple. I'm just drinking a little uh, Angel's Envy bourbon. Um, got to clean out the liquor cabinet, you know. So not my favorite bourbon. It, it, it's got like... Um, this is the bottle. It's actually kind of, it's not cheap. It's aged in fine port wine barrels. And it, I, I feel like it gives off like a little medicine-y kind of taste. Some people love this shit. I got it as a Christmas present. Again, not my favorite. If you're wondering about my glass, this is actually where I wanted whiskey tonight. This is from the Tiki Tiki Bar. I stole this in Chicago, from a bar in Chicago on <laughs> Monday. I just walked out with the glass. So uh, I was a little to drink up and be somebody. Oh, mm. okay. What a week. All right, banned again. Eight twenty. Uh, my, my episode of the Friday wrap-up from 825 was removed because of COVID misinformation. Um, because I mentioned that the, you know, the uh, injections and the um, mask didn't work. I mean, I don't, I don't know where I could have gotten that misinformation from. It worked so fucking well. My mea culpa. So yeah, they, because I, I basically just stated a fact, they, they yanked the fucking episode, hit the channel with a strike, so now I can't post on YouTube for a week, so um, those of you that have a Rumble account, you'll see this episode tonight. Uh, those of you that <coughs> do not have a Rumble account, usually watch me on YouTube, you'll have to wait a week. Otherwise, I guess, you know, well, telling you to text me for the fucking link is pretty much useless at this point. So there you go. Um, you're probably wondering what's going on with my surroundings here. I, uh, I'm in my kitchen uh, because I closed my office. I packed it up. I moved it over to the house. So the desk, everything, well, the sneaker wall is still there because I'm still in the process of moving that. But um, yeah, so I'm broadcasting from the kitchen tonight. Uh, so, you know, there's no fun shit hanging out behind me. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. Okay, so, wow, what a week. Um, I was in Chicago uh, uh, last week, well, this week, actually. I left Sunday, and uh, I got back on Tuesday. Man, let me, I, 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 I fucking hate flight. I, you know, I don't understand how people do this regularly. Like, I mean, to me, taking a vacation and having to get there by airplane is fucking nonsense, because I get more fucking aggravated getting on and off a fucking plane than anything else. So, <clears throat> you know, I took a fucking red eye Sunday. It was, I think I had an 8.30 flight, and I didn't get a lot of sleep the night before. So, you know, which is okay, because I figured, you know what, I'll sleep on the fucking plane, you know? But plus, I, I, I didn't have to be anywhere in Chicago until about 6.30 that night, so I figured that's okay. You get on a fucking plane, took JetBlue. You know, I prefer flying Delta, uh, but JetBlue usually has better rates, so you know you go you go you go where your dollar stretches the furthest, right? So you know, here's my thing about these fucking planes: they could make them a little bit bigger. I mean, the fucking chair is like this, okay? You're like right on top of the plane. There's no like JetBlue doesn't have any option for like, well, at least on this flight, they didn't have any option for like business class or whatever the fuck. So yeah, I'm sitting in coach, you know. To me, business class, coach, it's all the same shit. So my problem is more the, the, the aisle, you know, between between the, when you're coming down a fucking plane. So they had these fat stewardesses. Like, I mean, like their asses were like wider than my shoulders. And they had two of them. They needed to put two fat asses on a fucking plane, right? They couldn't just get away with one and then a small one. They had to have two. So every time these two rhinoceroses walked past me, their asses would hit me in the fucking shoulder or in the head. Because I always sit on the aisle. I don't like sitting by the fucking window. So every, every time they passed me, boom, one of them knocked my headphones off. I swear to God, she knocked my fucking headphones off with her ass cheeks. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Go on a diet. 
So, you know, it's too early for this shit. Okay? It's just, it's just too fucking early for this shit. Now, you know, when you get on a jet blue plane, okay, um, <laughs> you know, you have, like, the video and the thing, you know, you plug your headphones in, you can watch, you know, watch TV or whatever the fuck. None, none of that worked. Uh, the movie worked. That was it. But usually they have, like, a TV station to, like, you know, like it's, it's direct TV. None of that shit worked. So, you know, getting to fucking Chicago was was a delight. Uh, and more on that a little later. Matter of fact, even when I landed in Chicago, uh, fuck, man. They turned one of the um, areas where you wait for a shuttle bus, or because I was going to the Hilton, so I usually run shuttles from the airport to the Hilton. Uh, they turned it into a migrant center, so I mean, you got all these fucking refugees just, just camped out, with no shoes, nobody's wearing shoes. What the, how the fuck they come over here? Just, just camped out all over the fucking place. It's delightful. Oh god, and, you know, and then like you know, you in the airport, you see these fucking mouth breathers. I just want to smack everybody. Like, what is the fucking thing with the neck pillow? Can I know? What, what these people walk around with a pillow around their neck? They get on a plane. Like, how is this comfortable? I don't get it. Okay, you look fucking ridiculous. Okay, stop it. What are you, Queen Anne or something? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> and my biggest gripe, always, 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 airport security. It's always a fucking problem. I can't do that because I'll scratch my table. It's always a fucking problem. You know, like, you go through the thing, you gotta take your shoes off, they want you to take your laptop out of your bag, take your fucking belt. Why do I need to do all of this? Okay? You go through an x-ray machine, you can see my dick. I, I, I'm looking at it on the screen. Clear as a fucking bell, there's my cock. If you can see my fucking cock, you can see everything in my pockets. You can see my, if I have a razor blade in my shoe, you can see it. I don't mind taking shit out of my pockets, but taking your shoes off, then you gotta walk around and with your socks, and I gotta put them back in a fucking shoe, I gotta disinfect everything because these people are disgusting. Why do I need to take my laptop out of my bag? It's a laptop. You're going to see it in the bag. You're going to x-ray it the same way you'd x-ray it if it was on the fucking tray. What is it? It's not a lead line bag. Well, why do I need to do that? I don't get it. It's overkill. And it's because these people that are operating TSA have the IQ of a fucking turtle. Okay, not to insult the turtles, but Jesus fucking Christ, they're fucking retarded. You ever see these momos? When I was going through... <laughs> I'm walking through the fucking, uh, you know, TSA line, which that was like a rat's maze. There's nobody there. I got to go through this because I tried to cut underneath and I got yelled at. Anyways, so this chick, black girl, and they love me. I don't know why. Um, she's like, oh, hello. Hey, baby. How you doing? I'm like, look, you're friendly. But yeah, I don't get it. Like, what the fuck? Why do I gotta disrobe myself? Why do I bother getting dressed? You know, I should just show up to the airport fucking naked. Then you get on a fucking plane, you get comfortable, you put your headphones on, you start watching the movie, and then they gotta do the goddamn seatbelt tutorial, right? Like, how to put your seatbelt on. Like, who the fuck doesn't know how to use a goddamn fucking seatbelt? You interrupt the movie for this, okay? If there's some momo that, that, needs, that doesn't know how to, like, put the fucking buck, the thing in the buckle... They shouldn't even be allowed on a plane. They should give them like a quick little color by number test. Find green and blue. I mean, you know what I mean? Get the fucking out of here with these mongoloids. Now, while I was flying, I did come up with a really good idea. Um, you know, like, because JetBlue, like, there's a channel where you could see the map, is a map and you could see where the plane is, like, crossing the country. I said it'd be a great idea to put a fucking camera in the nose of the plane. So that I can see what the fucking pilot is seeing. Because I don't trust these motherfuckers. Like, I mean, you know, one of these guys has one fucking bad day. Their wife cheats on him or something. They're ready to fucking ready, ready to crash the goddamn plane into a mountain. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it'd be nice if I could just, like, flip to a channel and see exactly what's in front of the fucking plane. I think that would be nice. Okay? And then, of course, coming back from Chicago, that was, that was another chore in itself. Never fails. Every time I leave Chicago, my flight gets delayed. Every time. So I had like a, uh, I think it was a 5.30 flight. I get to the airport like 4 o'clock. 
you know, I, I leave my crew, I get there at four o'clock. And as I'm checking in, I see the thing uh, delayed it's at 6.45. All right, I go sit by the bar. I have a couple of cocktails. I get up, I go look again, delayed again till 7.15. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, why? Every fucking time. I could have went at dinner or something, you know? Jesus Christ. My kind of town, Chicago is. My kind of town, Chicago is. My kind of people, too. People who shoot at you at each time I leave, Chicago is. Tug in my sleeve, Chicago is. All right, enough of that. Okay, kids, we got one hell of a show. Biden, Bobert, and Fetterman, oh my. All right, so on another Biden blunder. Well, you know, Joe Biden, even when I'm out of town, never fails to disappoint. So he managed to piss off Brazil. How you piss off one of the happiest countries in the world, I don't know. Okay? I really don't know. So he was over there last week. I guess he had to do, you know, he was some kind of fucking, um... He, he, he was giving a speech on, like, uh, you, you know, to announce, like, a partnership between um, the United States and, 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 and Brazil and workers' rights and whatever the fuck. Anyway, he walks onto the stage, walks right into a fucking flag, okay? Just, boom, into the flag. Then he stumbles through the fucking speech, gaff-prone, stumbling over words, yelling when it's not appropriate... And then the president of Brazil comes on stage, and he was visit. He, you, you could tell the guy was absolutely annoyed at Biden. And then at the end of his speech, oh, then the, the Brazilian president starts talking. So Biden's trying to use the translator. He's fucking around with that. He's annoying the shit out of the president. The guy kept turning around and giving him dirty looks. It was great. <laughs> and then at the end, he's supposed. The guy goes to shake Biden's hand, and Biden just wanders off. And you could see this fucking president going ah. <laughs> So he managed to piss off Brazil. He walks into a seven-foot flag. How you miss the flag? I don't know. He turned the corner too quick. This guy's an absolute disaster. It really is. It's a fucking... It's a nightmare. All right, kids on. 52 farts. Off the top of the fart deck. What do we got? Oh, my, a butt sigh. This is an especially dry and muted excretion of air from the anus, producing a sound similar to that of an oral exhalation like huh. <laughs> like you know you'd feel like you got one in the chamber and it's got some it's got some horsepower behind it you just let it loose and it's like huh. it's like a disappointment I hate that <laughs> okay kids get your tickets out we're about to hop on to that maniacal magical express of the mayhem and fuckery the crazy train's about to leave the station oh boy Woo-hoo! First stop, New York City. Well, Mayor Motherfucker is now changing his mind on New York City's status as a sanctuary city. Well, no shit, okay? Damage is already done, cuz, okay? You know, like, they were talking about this on Fox earlier today. Um, how all these, like, sanctuary states and sanctuary cities, they all called Donald Trump a racist because... He wanted to keep the borders closed because he saw how this was going to be a problem. And they go, well, he doesn't want people here. We, we, we're, we're opening our doors if someone comes in, you know, because the Statue of Liberty, give us your free, your filthy, your smelly, your retarded, you know, whatever. Whatever the Statue of Liberty fucking said. So, you know, they all you know, called him a racist and they all said, yeah, they would accept anybody who, who came in through the borders or whatever because they never really fucking thought it would happen. Uh, and then here comes Biden. Opens the borders, tells everybody, come on in, and they all come on in, and now all these sanctuary cities, I guess they didn't think they'd get past Texas. Now they're all changing it, they're like, oh my God, this is terrible. The, these Democrats, these self-proclaimed, you know, self-righteous, unracist people, the minute a Mexican showed up in fucking Martha's Vineyard, they hung a clothesline, and you never saw these Mexicans again. We still can't find them, okay? I don't know if they drowned them or what, fed them to the sharks, you can't find them, they're gone. I don't understand. I really just don't understand. So, so now all of a sudden, now because New York City is just a shithole, 
like, oh, he's like, well, you know, I'm not, I don't think we should be in sanctuary city. So what are you going to do? Tell everybody to leave. Fucking damage is already done. They don't even know where to put these fucking people. They just keep coming. Bus loads and bus loads and bus loads and bus loads. They overrun Texas. They overrun Chicago. They overrun everything. They're like cockroaches. And then, God forbid, they start fucking multiplying. Oh, Lord. I just want to find a fucking island. Just with nobody... No, nobody's there. I, you know, I, that's that's all I want. Matter of fact, I ran into a buddy of mine the other day. And we were talking about this. My friend Jimmy. And Jimmy, uh, he's a nice guy. But sometimes, yeah, he's a few French fries short of a Happy Meal. Um, he always sounds like he had a stroke. Yeah, he talks like this. I, you know, I think that what we should do is keep the borders open. I just fill the Rio Grande with, like, alligators and crocodiles. And you know something? As nuts as this man is, that is a fucking great idea. Doesn't just let nature take its course. Huh, I think that's a fantastic idea, Jimmy. I tip my hat to you. So that's what they should do. You want to keep the borders open? Fine. Round up all the fucking gators in the south, south Texas. Well, they got them. It's just... Louisiana, they got plenty to spare. And just fucking stuff the Rio with them. Yeah, hey, listen, maybe even find a couple of bull sharks in the Mississippi. Stick them in there too. A couple piranha. You know, when these little, when they come, you know, sauntering across the Rio, <laughs> they'll get the one nice surprise. Okay, that's all I'm saying. All right, next stop in New York City, uh, Dave Portnoy. Now, you've heard me mention Dave Portnoy before. He's the guy that does all the pizza reviews. Now, I. I've, I've, I've been very vocal, uh, and, and I don't like, you know, let me re rephrase it. I don't like the guy, but I respect him. I think he's a very intelligent man. I just cannot stand these fucking half-assed pizza reviews that he does because he really has no clue what he's talking about. He has no culinary background whatsoever. And in my opinion, if you're going to give a review on anything food-related, you should know what the fuck you're talking about, aside from, I like pizza. But that's... Another thing, another topic. These pizza reviews do help some of these businesses. I would imagine some of them it crushes, uh, you know, because people are stupid. They listen to them. But that aside, he does try to help that business community. Um, he's doing like some kind of pizza festival, I believe, in the city. I don't, I don't know exactly where it was, and um, he has all various vendors and stuff like that coming in. And um, <clears throat> the Washington Post. Because Portnoy is a conservative. Now, he may not be a Trump guy. I, I don't know if he is or he isn't. If he wasn't, I think he is now. He's de I don't want to hear, you know, he's an independent. He's definitely a conservative. He's got to be. He's a capitalist. And like I said, he's not a stupid guy. Uh, I may not like his reviews. I may not like his, his attitude or his, or his personality, I should say. But I do respect the man's intellect. Um, I mean, look, he built... From from fucking sports blogging in his house in, in Massachusetts, he built this fucking empire, this sports empire, Boston Sports, which he sold for millions of dollars and then bought it back for a dollar. And he's still like, you know, top of the fucking food chain. So for that, I got to, I, you got to respect the guy. He's not, that's not a stupid guy. All right. So, and he's got balls. I'll give him that. So the Washington Post, like right the day before this this pizza uh, festival is supposed to happen, they started calling his advertisers, trying to put out a hit piece saying, "Ah, oh, you know, do you how do you feel about you know do you want to protect yourself by not advertising with Dave Portnoy because he's a misogynist, he's a sexist, blah blah blah, this that." You know how these fucking activists retarded. They're supposed to be journalists, right? But they're not. All liberals. So it got back to Dave, and he actually saw an email that was sent to one of his or one of his advertisers. Basically, you know, it was a hit piece. So he, that's why I love the guy. He puts a camera on, he calls the um, the journalist and calls her out on it. And she goes, no, I didn't do that. I didn't. He goes, oh, really? Because here's an email that you sent to so-and-so. And he reads the email verbatim and she's like, well, uh, yeah, I, I, so what am I? He goes, yeah, so basically you're trying to fucking discredit me, trying to put out a hit piece just, just, just to make me look bad. Why? Because I don't, I don't, Give in to your views. Good for you, Dave. Tonight, I tip my hat. Azalud, okay? We may not be friends, but I got I to gotta respect that. Dave Portnoy. 
Okay, next stop, Washington, D.C. Well, this is just fucking absolutely insane. The, that fucking retard, Schumer, okay? This it changes the dress code in the Senate because basically Fetterman doesn't know how to wear fucking pants, okay? This guy refuses to wear a suit. He walks around like a big, fat, stupid slob, okay? Basketball shorts, thicky shirts, hoodies. The, like he, he refuses to buy a fucking suit and tie. So, the, I guess so if I'm not feel bad, this moron changes the dress code. Just like, basically, wear whatever the fuck you want. The, these jerk-off Democrats are turning this country into a fucking joke. You, you know, I was talking to a, a, one of my guys the other day, and we were lamenting how... You know, we used to go to go to work in a suit and tie. Like, when I used to go on appointments and shit, like, I mean, 10 or 9s, fucking, you know, Canali suits, nice silk tie, beautiful, custom-made shirt, the whole line. You walked in looking like a fucking professional. Nobody gets stressed anymore. Now it's this business casual shit. To me, business casual is a suit, no tie. You know what I mean? Or, like, even if I wear, like, a, like a, a sport jacket and pants, I used to wear a fucking tie. That was that was Friday casual. If I had appointments on a Friday, that's that was my business casual. Okay, in the summertime I don't wear ties because it's too fucking hot. But other than that, I used to get dressed to go to work. Now, now, now people are going to work like fucking bums. This is the Senate. You're not supposed to look like a bunch of refugees. Okay, you're supposed to show some fucking class. It's a respect thing. And when you show up looking like a fucking bum, guess what? You're perceived like one. Like, I mean, most of the time, I look like I'm ready to knock over a truck. Eh. <clears throat> it's okay. It keeps people away from me. Somebody told me I was like, that I look so I look very mean all the time. And I went, yeah, I do. And she's like, do it on purpose because I don't like people. I'm fucking believable. Dumb. Uh, breaking news in D.C. Senator Bob Melendez from New Jersey was just indicted on bribery and corruption charges. I guess they raided his house, and they found like a half a million dollars in cash hidden in a couple of jackets, and like, you know, actual gold bricks and shit like that. And it's alleged that, you know, he was peddling influence and whatever the fuck he was doing to Egypt and whatever. Oh, yeah, a big shock. Uh, a Democrat that was corrupt and, and, and bribed. Shocking. Anyway, more developing on that. But here's my... Th See, these fucking guys, they all want to be gangsters, but they don't know shit. If you if you got that kind of loose cash, gold, what, why would you hide it in your house? That's the first place the FBI are going to look. Go find a fucking safe house. Bury it in a fucking... You know, dig a fucking hole in your backyard. Put it in a cooler. Stick it in a cooler. Fucking... Cover it with a concrete slab. Put more dirt over it. You know where it is. That's okay. You'll find it when you need it. Uh, uh, wrap it in saran wrap. Look, I don't get what the fuck is wrong with these people. They're stupid. Dumb. Watch an episode of The Sopranos, you fucking retards. If you're going to be criminals, then do it right. All right. Final stop. Colorado. More specifically, Denver. So, um, this pertains to Senator Lauren Boebert, who's a Republican. Cute little broad, too. I mean, I'm sure everybody in the, in the fucking Senate is cracking their neck at this girl. Um, <coughs> single. So she goes out on a date with a bar owner in Denver, and they go to some theater. I don't know if it was a movie theater or a play, I think it was a playhouse. And I guess, you know, throughout the thing, they get a little frisky. He's grabbing her tits. She's grabbing his hog. You know, I mean, listen, she's a nice girl. She's a good girl, this girl. Okay. You know, first date and they're getting frisky. So we're going to have a little fun. What's the big fucking deal? Okay? Then, of course, somebody had a video of it and, you know, oh, let's just pulse them and they called security and, like, she did such a, a bad thing. She's just she's just petting the guy's fucking hug. It's not like she was blowing him in the fucking theater. She's just nice, petting him. He probably paid for the tickets. That's what you're supposed to do. She's thanking him. Nice. And she was raised right. That's a good girl right there. So, needless to say, she got thrown out of the fucking theater. It was a whole thing, a whole big fucking to do. Anyway, turns out she dumped the guy because she found out he was a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a question you should always ask first. Before you start dating somebody, I'm going to give you a little dating advice, okay? So, so as to not waste your time, men, women, whatever. You meet somebody new, right, whatever, okay? You know... 
that should be like the first question you ask. You got kids? What do you like to do? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? I usually, I would start with probably the Republican or the Democrat so you could save yourself, you know, the other two questions. But that's usually a good way to start. That way you know right then and there, either this person's a fucking momo or they might have a brain in their head that can carry on an intelligent conversation. Otherwise, you know, you, you date somebody who's a Democrat, you, you just, that, that, the evening is shot. Done. Done. Matter of, and if you're doing like one of those dating online thingies, you should put that shit in your profile. Republican. I refuse to date morons and Democrats. That's all. It'll, it'll, it'll cut the playing field in half. Okay? That's it. Listen, conservative chicks are cute. The Democrat ones are fucking crazy. But the conservative ones are cute. All right, kids, your sports update. NFL. So last week I said the Giants and the Cardinals were playing on Sunday. I don't know why I said that. Um, I got my wires crossed, so correction. Uh, they played yesterday. And they lost. Okay. Um, uh, actually, no, they played the 49ers. I look, look at me. I'm, I'm all over the fucking place. So <clears throat> I said they were playing the fucking Cardinals on Sunday. And I think I was looking at October 2nd. Uh, that's probably what it was. Because they played the 49ers yesterday, and they got fucking, they got blasted. They got shot. Okay, they, they killed. Anyway, the best part of the whole fucking game was some brawl broke out in the stands. 49ers fans are crazy, apparently. There's some brawl that broke out in the fans. I mean, it was just like 20 people just beating the shit out of each other. I would have enjoyed watching that more than the fucking Giants get their asses handed to them again. But, uh, yeah, that was that. So, um... Oh, okay, so uh, your upcoming lineup, Giants play the Seahawks Monday on October 2nd at 8.15. Jets play the Pats Sunday at 1. Bills and Redskins, or Commanders, whatever the fuck you want to call them, Sunday at 1. Saints and Packers, also Sunday at 1. MLB, well, Yankees and Mets equally suck. It pains me to say this. To put the Yankees in, in the same category as the Mets, absolutely is like a fucking dagger to the heart. But they're both tied for last place. However, the Phillies are in second place. Um, so that that delights me, kind of. You know, I, I, like I said, I mean, if the Yankees aren't going to do anything, eh, at least the Phillies, I kind of I like them. They're my backup team. So you line up for tonight, Yankees and Diamondbacks tonight at 7.05. Mets and Phillies tonight at 7.05. Uh, and that's it on Tommy's Pub and Grub Review. Well, you know, one of the beautiful things about going to Chicago is I gained probably about third, five to ten pounds. I mean, it's just a fucking feeding frenzy. It's one of my favorite cities to eat in. Now, I wasn't actually in the city this time around. Um, <clears throat> I was um, I was just outside the city because we had a, a big company meeting. So we did it like at a, in the, near the convention center which is in Rosemont, Illinois, which is like 10 minutes out from O'Hare, and it's maybe like 20 minutes from the city. So it's a big ent dining and entertainment district, and they have like, you know, they have all like the, the they have Caluchis, and they have Carmines, and Gibsons, and Mortons, and all that shit. So they have all the big Chicago names there, but they have like this little village, uh, which they call Rosemont Park, and it's like, a big strip of like bars and restaurants, and they have a fogo de chow there. They have some great, some great, great spots to eat. So, I landed Sunday, like I said, about 10 30, 11 o'clock. Um, so, by the time I checked in, I was a little hungry. I went over to uh, the Rosemont Village to this little bar that I know over there called the Park Tavern. Very nice place, kind of upscale, good sports bar. So, I was watching a Chicago Bears game, and I ordered, I just wanted a little something, you know, not like a big fucking meal. So I got some barbecue brisket sliders, which, oh my God, these were fucking amazing. Like they, they, <coughs> they cube up the brisket, they toss it in the barbecue sauce, they put it on these little brioche buns, and then they top it with this cheese sauce. And then they give you some frizzled onions to put on top, you know? I mean, oh my God, fuck the lights out. The only downside about these bars in Chicago um, is they don't have yingling, ever. And there's another beer that's popular in Chicago called Old Time, which is hard to find. It's, a, it's an old school kind of beer. 
and you don't see it very often. So, you know, get, grabbing a beer in one of these places is, is for me, usually a chore. Uh, so that was Park Tavern. I had lunch there. So the, sa sa Sunday night, we were supposed to go to this place called Bill Murray's Caddy Shack. Apparently, Bill Murray has a re chain of restaurant, him and his brothers. And it's like a bar and grill, kind of like an Applebee's type of shit. Not my scene. And uh, one of my guys is just like me. He's, a, he's an older guy. He's, you know, he's CEO. So he's, he's, um, he's a big foodie. Another Italian. So he goes, Tommaso. He calls me Tommaso. He goes, what the fuck is this Caddyshack shit? I, says, I don't know, Mario. I said, but we're nixing this shit right now. I said, I ain't going there. <laughs> he goes, all right. He's like, I, thought, he's like, I knew you would, have, you, you, you would have a problem with it. But yeah, yeah, we're not going there. I said, tell you what, there's a Morton's right over here. I said, I'll see if I can get us in. So I, I called up, got us a reservation. Boom, 7 o'clock, nine people. Here we go. Now, Morton's Steakhouse was like one of the better known steakhouses in Chicago back in the time. And then they got bought out by Landry's, which is a, you know, corporate thing. And they started to franchise it. Uh, it's a high-end steakhouse. They have some good wine. They have some good steak. It's not as good as it used to be. It used to be better before it got bought out by Landry's. Uh, because I guess they got their beef from, you know, private... You know, maybe from one type of particular ranch. Landry's is sourcing beef from all over the place, so it's not consistent. That's the point. That's the that's the point I'm trying to make. And when with a steakhouse, when you have inconsistency in the beef, it's not as good. Still, like I said, much better choice than Caddyshack, and it wasn't bad. So I had, I mean, we <laughs> we started out with. Um, I wish I would have taken pictures of this stuff, but I didn't. So I got some stock photos, but. We uh, we started out with uh, bacon wrapped scallops and some and some shrimp cocktail and some crab cake some you know lump crab cakes delicious and then I, I went with uh, dry aged New York strip black and blue of course and um, you know we had some sides we had like asparagus and the truffle French fries but they had like these sautéed Brussels sprouts which were fucking delightful we went through about three bottles of wine I can't tell you how much scotch. Yeah, so we were, you know, that was a good night. <laughs> Following night, went to this other place called Saltwater Coastal Grill. Again, in Rosemont Park. Now, I love sushi, and it's just a recent development. I, 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 I never liked it before um, until I discovered, because I don't like seaweed. It doesn't agree with me. I don't like the taste of it. But then I discovered soy paper. And you can wrap the sushi in soy paper. They all have it, alternatively, as opposed to seaweed. And since then, I, I can't get enough of this shit. So we go to this place, Saltwater Grill, which is like, you know, a mixed kind of grill. You know, it's like a bar and grill type of thing. Nice upscale place. So I think it's owned by Greeks because it looked a little Greek. But they had a sushi station. They had this guy, um, Ichiro. That was his name. Chef Ichiro. He was from Japan. So he's legit. Nice guy. So he makes us this fucking sushi boat. It was like, I mean, it's the size of a toddler. It's loaded. Sashimi, which, you know, I, I mean, I could eat raw tuna until my fucking eyeballs fall out of my head. All kinds of sushi rolls and shit like that. I mean, we were fucking chowing down. Matter of fact, I, I ended up ordering a sushi roll um, for dinner because I was stuffed. But So, I mean, basically all I did on this trip was eat seafood and steak. I mean, how can you go wrong, right? So that was that was Saltwater Coastal Grill. Check out some of those sushi pictures. I mean, they, this place was legit. The service sucked. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to lie. The fucking service was terrible. The waitress had no clue what the hell she was doing. She didn't know what the rolls were, nothing. But the sushi was fantastic. Perfect. And then, of course, we capped it off with lunch at Gibson's, one of my favorite fucking steakhouses in Chicago. As a matter of fact, anytime I'm in the city, I, I always go... To Gibson's on the Gold Coast, just you know, for a nice strip, KC strip. Oh my God, they just put, they bring the steaks out to you when you they roll them. You pick out your steak, and they do the same with the lobsters and the dessert. I mean, this place is famous. It's it's probably one of the top steakhouses in Chicago. I wouldn't say it's the best 
because I haven't eaten in all of them. I mean, I mean, I've been to so many of them, but and but this one's definitely one of my favorite. And I love going there for lunch because I like their lunch options too. So I, whenever I go, I have a hard time, you know, between the filet mignon sliders or the prime rib French dip. So this time around, I went with the prime rib French dip, which is kind of like a riff on a Chicago beef. It's not a Chicago beef sandwich per se, but they they give you the hot jardinera. They give you the au jus on the side, and it's just shaved prime rib, you know, and a nice crusty loaf of Italian bread. You dunk it, you put your you, you top it with the hot hot jardinera, and I can't get enough of this shit when I'm in Chicago because hot jardinera there is different than the jardinera you get here. Here it's garbage. The, the real hot jardinera from Chicago lights out. You could put this shit on a shoe, and it would be amazing. So. Yeah, I mean, t I mean, tell me that's not a sexy sandwich, right? You're dipping it in the jus. Oh, my God. I was in a fucking food coma. It's great. <laughs> I didn't mind that my fucking flight was delayed. <laughs> okay, kids on right are racist. Okay, over 60% of black and Latino youth aged between 2 and 19 are overweight or obese. Per the President's Council on Fitness, Sports, and Nutrition. Well, that's racist. It's actually slightly less than 40%. I mean, still, that's a lot. I mean, Jesus Christ, stay out of the fucking McDonald's. Eat a vegetable once in a while, all right? You know? Don't go for those late-night chopped cheeses. You know, limit your arroz and gandules to maybe like, you know, once or twice a week. Do a jumping jack or something. Yeah, I mean, fucking disgrace. All right, kids, your PSA. So you know, with all this travel and shit like that, you know, airplane etiquette. I might have, I might have talked about this to some degree or another, but you know, I'll talk about it again. So I've discovered I travel a lot for work, so I'm always on planes and I fucking hate them. And I don't like stewardess. As I told you, the woman kept hitting me in the side of the head with her ass. So I. I, I I got into this habit, when I go on the plane, right, as soon as I get on the plane, you know, there's a stewardess that's always there, smiling and waving, I always, like, pop a 20 right in their hand. A little wise guy ingenuity, right? A little, little Brooklyn ingenuity. I always hit them with a 20. Sometimes they just, they go, oh, I can't, I mean, that's for you. And then I go, sit down. Now they remember me, right? So, it's a little insurance. That's all it is. I get nice treatment. They hand me, you know, they don't charge me for, you know, if I want alcohol, they're not going to charge me. They, they slip me a couple bottles, you know, or, you know, they'll give you, like, extra snacks and shit like that. You know, stuff like that. That's why you just hit them with the $20 bill, bang, they never get tipped, so that's a nice thing. So, tipping the stewardess when getting on a plane is a very good idea. Now, here's why, how it came in handy. When I was coming to Chicago, so I'm leaving JFK, we're getting ready to board the plane, I noticed this couple standing off to the side. You could tell they were fucking liberals. They were dripping, dripping with, with liberalism. The, now, they had to be like in their mid to late 50s, I think. The wife was a fucking Jap. Not Japanese, a Jap. You don't know what the fuck that is? Go Google it, okay? She had like a dyed red hair. She had her eyes like, you know, she put the... The makeup on to make her look a little slanty eyed, you know? And she's not wearing a fucking bra. Her nipples are like that. I mean, it's too early for this shit. I don't need this shit in the morning, okay? So the fucking nipples are on, and her, the guy she was with is fucking more to the father. You can tell. This guy probably would blow Bernie Sanders. He's so fucking Democrat. He's got back hair coming out of his shirt. Ugh. Fuck. I mean, look at these two fucking mopes. And of course, where do they end up sitting? Right in fuck in front of me. Now, here's where the airplane etiquette is a problem. Now, when you're on a coach, you're sitting in coach, right? Okay? It's a three-hour flight. Right? If you're going to put your seat back a little bit, you don't have to fucking recline it all the way. Okay? Because you're now you're in my lap. This is the problem. Okay? Now, I know that. I never do that. I actually, I don't even move my seat. I sit straight up because I don't want to fucking, you know, be in the other person's lap behind me, it's, that's etiquette, okay? If you have any class, any fucking manners, any coot, you know this. These motherfuckers, nope. Why? 
liberals. Now, here's where the problem comes into play. So as soon as I take the seatbelt sign off, I had my tray down, I had my phone, I think, and I'm just starting to nod off. This cocksucker snaps his fucking seat back. The goddamn tray hits me in the fucking chest. I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like practically in my lap. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm, 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 I'm 20 minutes into this fucking plane ride. I'm like, I'm ready to murder somebody. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. So I politely lean over and I say, excuse me. Would you mind putting your seat up a little bit because your tray, my tr you're in my fucking lap. What does this cunt say to me? He goes, well, it's my seat. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I understand that. And he said, but maybe you, I didn't make myself clear. You're like practically in my fucking lap. He's like, well, I paid for this seat. I, I can do what I want with it. I said, okay, I see how this is going to go. I said, so maybe, let me, let me, let me come at you from a different direction. I said, if you don't, I said, I asked you nicely the first time. I said, now I'm going to tell you, if you don't move your fucking seat up, I'm going to beat the ever, I'm going to drag you into the bathroom and I'm going to beat the ever loving fucking shit out of you. You understand me? I'm going to grab you by your fucking back hair, I'm going to drag you down the fucking aisle, stick you in a bathroom, and kick the ever loving shit out of you. Is that a threat? I says, no, it's a motherfucking guarantee. I says, now move your fucking seat up or I'll do it for you. Okay? Huh, I am. I says, all right, you don't want to move your seat up? No problem. I lean back. Every time this guy started to lean back, boom, I hit the fucking front of the seat. The guy couldn't fly. The girl next to me jumped. I said, don't get nervous. It's all right. And so I hit him again. Boom. He fucking goes, I said, you're going to move your fucking seat up? Because I can do this all fucking day long. I got no feeling in my right hand. Don't hurt. I'm going to tell the steward or something. Ah, you fuck. Hey, listen, man. Now, here's, here's the kind of fucking mope this broad is. Now, here's your fucking man getting pummeled by a gorilla behind him. What does he do? I'm going to tell on you. Oh, yeah. He's probably got a dick this big. I says, go ahead. Go do what you want. I said, but understand something. They can't arrest me until we land in Chicago. And by the time we fucking land in Chicago, I promise you, I'm going to give them a good reason to lock me up because I'm going to fucking break your neck. So go ahead, you do what you want to do. So he he's wait, he's raising his hand, and wait, the stewardess comes over. She says, "Can I help you?" She's from Texas, total Republican. You could tell, big broad from Texas. She's a Republican. She'd blow Donald Trump if he walked onto the fucking plane. That's how Republican this broad was. So he proceeds to tell her. She goes, she looks at me. She like winks, and she goes, "Well, sir, I'm, the captain is going to ask, ask that everybody keeps their seat in an upright position." So could you please move your seat up a little bit all the way? So she made the guy see because she's she, for safety reasons. So she goes, she taps me on the shoulder. At that point, I didn't mind her hitting me in the head with her ass. So, yeah, I mean, that's why you tip the fucking... I don't understand sometimes how I don't get arrested on these fucking airplanes because I have zero patience for people. But that's my point. If you're going to get on a fucking plane, don't be a cunt. Keep your seat straight up. What's If you're going to lean it back, lean it back a little bit. That's okay. It doesn't need to be in my fucking lap. All right? That's all. It's very simple. You know, and, it, and it, people just are brainless. You know what I'm saying? Like, the same stewardess now, just, she got chatty all of a sudden. So that, I, I guess they have these people trying to sell, like, credit cards. So she gets on them, interrupts the fucking movie. If you want to do this... Don't go on a microphone. Just talk. And she's telling us about the credit card. It was like a commercial. I'm saying we interrupted the movie for this. Because because I had to punch the guy, now I can't sleep. Because the fuck the thing woke me up. So now I'm awake. I might as well watch a movie, right? So I'm watching it. I'm like three, four minutes in. Now this woman gets chatty. Wants to start talking about credit cards. I'm like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. So ten, 10 minutes of this shit. Fine. Then just as she's done... Some mope in the fucking front seat has to ask her a question. And he's asking her about variable interest rates or whatever the fuck. It's early in the morning on a Sunday. What are you bothering people for? And I gotta listen to this because she's still got the fucking microphone on. <sighs> Google that shit and shut the fuck up, you fucking momo. Like, I don't understand what's wrong with people. Why you gotta ask questions? Shut up. Fucking retards. Anyway, stay COVIDless, kids. No mess, don't ask. Haters can kiss my ass and remember, 
Who loves you, babe? It's been your Friday wrap-up. I'll see you when I see you.